Hello, my name is Justin Cooper, and welcome to part three of the Three Arts Disability Culture Leadership Initiative of Chicago Model. This series highlights the voices and work of Chicago artists who have participated in the Three Arts Residency Fellowships at UIC. I was able to talk to Matt Bodette, Pooja Petit, and Andy Slater, artists who work in widely different mediums, yet overlap in regards to disability aesthetics. Matt is a visual artist, poet, and performance artist who plays an active role in disability advocacy and utilizing artwork to open dialogue around mental health. Pooja is a visual artist who uses time and scale to create abstract paintings. Andy is a blind sound artist, performer, musician, founder of the Society of Visually Impaired Sound Artists and director of the Sound as Sight Field Recording Project. We discuss their individual artistic practices and experiences of how working within a community can motivate your own voice and power. Time is what drives me. Given that I have a progressive disability, this makes it even more like there's a sense of urgency and I always feel like I'm rushing against time. There's so much I want to do and create. There's a lot of uh, giving in to the process. Uh, so when I'm feeling energetic, I usually work on several canvases at the same time. This allows me to use uh, periods of uh, rest, like when my body is tired, but I still want to create. In terms of scale, uh, I love experimenting with large format paintings. I've made work that's been over six feet um, tall, um, over seven feet wide. But then I also really enjoy working on very tiny pieces of paper, like five by seven inch drawings. The interplay between that and how they feed off of each other is uh, what I've been observing, writing about and thinking about. My work generally fits around my own lived experiences with schizophrenia. I use work to discuss what those experiences are, to break down stigmas, to encourage conversations and community support. The experience of it encompasses so many realms. Uh, whether they're auditory hallucinations, visual hallucinations, delusions, and just all the, the concepts related to that. The performances, there will often be about how do I recreate the experience of an auditory hallucination for someone so we can begin to have a conversation that's not around the assumed stereotypes that are presented by the movie that they just saw about a, an insane person. What you know, I, I want to recreate that experience so that they have a, a more legitimate or a more realistic version of the experience in order to have some common ground for a real discussion. About so I, I work a lot in sound because I can't see very well and I want to work in um, a medium that I'm comfortable with. I kind of just go overboard and try to do everything I can, like um, recording environmental sounds or public sounds, um, creating uh, sounds for, uh, you know, a sci-fi video game. Um, I, I, I'm bringing this platform now into sort of like a, a virtual reality or augmented reality um, project of mine and trying to just figure out ways to take something that is audible and expand it to people who are deaf or hard of hearing to an audience who may not necessarily be able to experience, uh, experience it in the way that I usually exhibit it. I like to control my own narrative by making sure that my disability is present in a lot of my work. Andy, I was listening to the recordings that you've made and some of them are pretty spine tingling to say the least. <laughs> and um, it, was, it, it was pretty unreal to be transported into this world that you're trying to create with sound. 
that a medium gives me the opportunity to do something that can be abstract or fictional or nonfiction and work within um, a ton of different uh, sort of tangents. Yeah, I think my paintings are pretty abstract. Um, they're not really based on any preliminary sketches or drawings. Hopefully the finished product, um, you can see these layers of movement and stillness existing together in the work. Going straight in from what Pooja was just saying, you know, schizo, schizoaffective schizophrenia is such an abstract experience and there's not a language. And so I have to find a new language every single time I'm making something. And now that I'm finding it, I find the, the exploration of that is continually finding that vein of gold that runs through sort of the core of the experience and you know, tapping into that every now and then and, and really harnessing it has become quite extraordinary. It continues to offer things that I felt like the younger version of me desperately needed. Um, what challenges have, have you faced? It's an interesting one because I don't think my, the challenge that, I's, that I have faced are related to access in the same way. Uh, because it's an invisible disability, the problem and the challenges that I face is when I start talking. <laughs> um, and I start talking about being schizophrenic. And I have had multiple occasions where arts world professionals say, okay, you can, you can make work about madness, but don't talk about it. Nobody wants to work with somebody who's crazy. That to me is, you, you just ignored everything that I do. Uh, and you totally devalued even, even me as a, as a person at that moment. That's my challenge, is really confronting normalcy. Yeah, you know, um, I think for me, being a painter, uh, trying to express my disability experience um, through my process uh, and not directly tackling the subject, it was challenging. On one hand, I had uh, feedback of the kind of, uh, well, do you really want to talk about the disability? So similar to what uh, Matt was saying earlier, like, how can I talk about my process without saying I have a disability? Because I was like, if I'm working with a disability, all my work must be about disability. Um, you know, there is no separating the two. Uh, I feel like there's no hiding behind our differences. So there aren't a lot of visually impaired sound artists. And a lot of it has to do with accessibility. And after decades of trying to, you know, record, you know, uh, uh, record in the field and use these sounds for my work, I can finally do it. But there's still a ton of, 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 like, of sound and music related technology that just isn't there yet. So I missed out on using all of this stuff. So kind of just being there in the forefront of saying like, hey, I'm a blind dude. Um, I want to work in virtual reality, but your program sucks and I can't see it and it doesn't do any of the things that it should do. It's because you guys are lazy programmers. With this stuff becoming more universal, I wanted to just get this moment and work on making more technology, especially creative tools, accessible for uh, blind people to create with and use. And so I'm just gonna go full on into virtual reality, augmented reality, and all this new tech that is growing as we speak and work to make it accessible. Currently where we are with everything being remote, these museum tours are going to be virtual and, and, and all of these things, artist talks can go uh, from one end of the world to the next, we can go to a gallery opening where we don't have to worry about uh, whether we can get up those stairs or any of that sort of thing. Yes, I totally, totally understand that as, as, a, as a wheelchair user. It's just like trying to find accessible spaces, especially accessible, accessible art spaces. It is, it is a challenge. And, it, you know, you want to check out everything, but then you realize, oh, well, there's a stairs there, there's stairs there. Oh. There's a ramp, but the ramp doesn't work. Or there's an elevator, the elevator doesn't work. Very well-meaning people saying, 
we'll help you. And I'm like, you can't lift this chair. It's really heavy. And then I'm sitting in it. <laughs> um, and my wheelchair clicks and whirs. And sometimes even when I'm stationary, something in the battery or the movement, it just makes these clicking noises. And, you know, there's an artist talk going on or a presentation. Yes. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> Or I can't just leave the room quietly to go to the restroom. Everyone's going to know yeah. that. I'm... No, that's, not, that's understandable. So uh, what I want to do is I want to uh, uh, you know, transition um, to your um, experience um, in the um, Three Arts uh, Residency um, Fellowship at um, UIC. And um, drawing from, upon your experience, um, I want to ask you, can you talk about how your work relates to disability aesthetics? Yeah, the... The residency was a very unique turning point for me uh, in relation to disability aesthetics because I don't make Andy's work and I don't make Pooja's work, and yet we have a lot in common. In when we get down to the discussion of things, and to me, that disability aesthetic, the way that we use our bodies, the way that we use our experiences in in relation to the the media choices and the the way that we function aesthetically I didn't know that there was such a rich and diverse community that simultaneously had very different ways of approaching things but in the end it was all about empowering each other finding ways for the the unique voices that we each bring to the table to have a place at the table the fellowship at UIC totally radicalized me it wasn't until um, I was introduced to bodies of work where I started um, doing, make, creating art about my disability. It was always kind of informed, but then I started doing it about my disability. I learned so much more about other experiences that are similar to mine, people with, um, with disabilities outside of, of blindness. And... Um, realized that I wanted to communicate my work more towards everybody. I wanted to continue to make work for my community. Um, and I wanted to do it without any kind of apology. So I started just thinking more and more about how can I put more of this sort of crip attitude into my work and um, my process has has matured and then I don't know unmatured dematured over the years has gone back and forth of being very serious and then kind of being like a snot nosed punk about stuff um, and so I do a lot of recording with my cane uh, interrupting spaces that um, may be sacred to some people going and sitting in a quiet space where they like to meditate and then putting my disabled body in there, moving around it, and that sort of thing, and recording it. Not only is it a, you know, an interesting statement to make, but it, you know, could be a really cool sound to, manip to manipulate and, uh, and work with. I think the activism part of my work uh, probably relates more to how I talk and present my work to make people understand or access that part of the disability community. Um, get an insight into our experiences and how enabling and powerful our lives are. And they're not based on lack of ability or some deficiency somewhere. Um, and I think it's very interesting to be able to communicate that through abstract painting. Thinking as, as, as Pooja and Andy were talking, it seems like we also live in a historic moment where being accepting of one's body and disability in and of itself is activism. And there's a beautiful quality to that sort of activism, uh, whether or not it's artistic, whether or not it, it comes out as an artistic medium, that somehow being accepting of oneself is an activist moment. Um, and that is a powerful idea. And that is one reason why I feel like this discussion that we've just had today is really like heartwarming and, and powerful and and progressive in in what we're doing and eventually i hope it disappears 
because we, we shouldn't always have to have this, but right now it is a necessary moment and, and, and this discussion is absolutely, it is activism just, just by being accepting of ourselves. I have myself has matured over the years, you know, because just being surrounded by, I think, badass people that are just like doing their own thing and just doing this amazing, amazing work. And so, yeah, that statement by Andy, I think, really stands out because I think in one shape or, or, or another, like we have like been radicalized, you know, by the disability rights movement. I, I, that's, I think that's one of my big takeaways from 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 that from that session. <laughs>